who will need to be stout up front. Larry, we are at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, as you get a look at Sports Authority Field at Mile High. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New York Jets and the Denver Broncos. It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in week 15. And as we see so frequently here in Colorado, that one over the inline. So it'll come out to the 25. take this up near the 35 maybe the 34 give him nine on the carry that time and they're set up with a second and one if these kinds of lanes are available you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground yeah you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step and that's a big pickup right there on first down and he'll give it here to his running back room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play and now they're faced with a third and one. They're just play number three here on the opening drive and it's an early third and one. Here's Cutler. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. Now they'll run it on the toss. And this winds up a disaster. Nowhere near the marker. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game. And the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Now a carry. It's C.J. Anderson. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back right at the 20. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Following the penalty, Anderson. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That was a good, strong run there. And while it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. And on the outside, they're playing Let's press go. coverage. Yeah. On second down, Anderson. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. 
C.J. Anderson, his 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Solid job up front, really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run, end result, six points. Touchdown. Now McManus on to kick this one off. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen also showed confidence in the defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. They run the counter now on first down. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through it. They go play action with Cutler. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. That had disaster written all over. You've got a right-handed quarterback, a rolling left, and throwing it pretty far downfield. It's really difficult to do, to try and get your body twisted around into the proper position and get anything on the ball as you heave it downfield. And that's what it actually turns into, a heave. And that's not really a good throw, is it? Not good, and we saw the result. They start the drive with Anderson. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Lynch looking to throw on second. He's got it, the tight end Jeff Hireman. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That goes for a gain of 31. And the big guy rumbles down the center of the field, and he gains leverage on a guy trying to cover him. It is really, really tough for the defender to get through him to make a play on the football. That's why guys love to throw that route down the middle, throw it deep, and let the big guy go get it. Now Lynch to throw. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. So that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They'll run. Anderson. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. C.J. Anderson, his second TD of the game and 18th of the year. And the Broncos will extend their lead. And it's good to make it 14-0. Now McManus on to kick this one off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does. And a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game. And typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero up. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And he will score. Touchdown, Denver. Part of what we 
just saw. That's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get overexcited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead has swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here. But you'll... And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. It's picked up by the Broncos. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Uh, let's be frank. You hate the fumble at the end of the play. But prior to that, I liked a lot of what was going on. Tucks it down, takes off, picks up good yardage. But in that portion of the field, that close to the sideline. Step out. Yeah, either get down or get out of bounds. Take care of the ball. Yeah, he had the yards, but then the mistake. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Second down, here's Lynch. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit at the 47-yard line. And now it's a third and four situation for the offense. Now Lynch. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook. On what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. And the punter's on the sideline. Here's the field goal unit now to try an exceptionally long one. This to equal Matt Prater's record. It's a 64-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Let's go! 319! 319! Now a handoff here to his running back. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. From 
the gun on third down, it's Cutler. Letting one go deep for it, and he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Quincy Anunwa, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jets are able to cut into this deficit. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. And Denver getting set to take the field. And the last go around for them, they tried that really, really long field goal, couldn't connect. And in retrospect, I think a lot of people would say, well, why would you try one that long? You hurt yourself in field position. The ball comes out, you know, there. That only helps the other team. But I look at it as maybe it was a double shot of confidence. Confident the kicker could make it. And even if he missed, confident in their defense that they could hold it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They go play action here on first down. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Second down, Lynch out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Watch tight. Tight is right. Watch tight. Tight is right. Here we go. Now. From the gun, it's Lynch. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. The 20. Whoa, it still won't go down. Give him 30 yards there. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. To throw again is Lynch. That's caught. It's Thomas. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. 
But close to the tight end for six. Gosh, those guys are so tough to cover, aren't they? Just, just in general, tight ends running those patterns near the goal line. Because you have to decide how you want to treat them. Are they a wide receiver? Are they a big extra blocker on the field? Or are they a hybrid and caught in between? So are you going to use a linebacker? Are you going to use a safety? Are you going to even move a corner in if you're going to play nickel or dime defense? They usually win those matchups because they have an answer for all three of those positions. <laughs> And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The New York set to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Now Cutler. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are season in December. Of giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Here's Lynch. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And a big turnover there his guys will get the football back. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait. And he's going to be taken down. Sacked back at the two. Vaughn Miller in there to drop him. And he continues to wreak havoc in offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. Now Cutler back into his end zone. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. On the NFL scoreboard, an update from Foxborough. And the Steelers there out to an early lead. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it'll stay tight throughout. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. Seven yards on the carry there, but now they're staring at fourth down. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down, seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to a first down. And he gets this away, angled for the sideline with a lot behind it. Wow. So the Broncos coming out now. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Blitz coming, and down he goes. David Bass. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Lynch now. Work to do, certainly, after that sack. This is third and long. Watch it now, Barney, Barney! Hot! 
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Now Paxton Lynch on third and long. Got a man. He finds Sanders. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Let's go! Detroit! Over, over, over! On first and ten, it's Lynch. And he hits his man on the out route, Demarius Thomas. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one, and let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap, jump too quickly. So a first down and five for the offense. Now a give, running right is Anderson. And he's brought down. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. C.J. Anderson as the first half is winding down. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. Now McManus for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And now out come the Jets. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> so we're at halftime. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Returning it, Carlos Henderson. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. A second quarter score from down in Houston. And the early going, it's the Texans out in front. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Throwing, Lynch, throwing the out route incomplete. It's Thomas, 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Denver has a first down on the 15-yard play. So the offense has it first and 10. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. Now Anderson running right. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now again Anderson and a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall near the 48 yard line only a gain of a yard there but it indeed gets him a new set of downs Throw on first down with Lynch. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. First down, here's the run with Anderson. And another mistake here defensively as a flag is down on the tackle, and that's going to tack on 15 more. Now the offense lining up first and 10. From the red zone now, here's Lynch on first down. Finds Jake Butt over the middle. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. Double tight. Double tight. Let's go. Green, 39. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A little eager there coming in from his outside linebacker position. You think the hard count got him there? Yes. Maybe that extra hut, you know, <laughs> that, that extra emphasis on it. Got him to jump, and they picked up five yards. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. touchdown his fourth puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game and we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it but he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one does he what a what a performance what an absolute great game that he's had here in this one
Now McManus on to kick this one off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Time running out here on the play clock. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Jets on third down, just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Now they'll run it on the toss. Shifts by him. And now a fumble. The ball's out. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. I don't know about you, but I could hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That yeah, was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession. No turnover. I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. All right, here we go. Blue lining! Blue lining! Welcome back now to Denver. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. of two, now third down. Oh, partner, that play brought back memories. Watching them string it out, letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't they? Play clock winding down. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And he gets it away, and it's a laser headed for the sidelines. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And Charles in a very one-sided affair. I think we reached.